Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to a brand new podcast today. We're on episode 55 already, man. This season's already flying by, and we're going to recap week three. And there's going to be a lot of content we're talking about today. we got to recap a lot of beautiful games that happened this past weekend. And, yeah, once again, I'm joined by my lovely co-host, Justin. How are we doing today, Justin? I'm doing great, man. Uh, what a slate of games yet again. A lot to get into. A lot of good things I like. A lot of mediocre bad play that we all have to get into and talk about. So I can't wait. Yeah. Let's get into it. Let's recap. You know, first things first, let's talk about my Giants. They got the job done. They got their first win of the season on Sunday against the Cleveland Browns. And we had a really good first half. Like, I think the first half score was 21 to 7. Second half, the Browns kind of controlled us there and didn't allow us to score any points. Could have had a touchdown probably possibly at the end, but Devin Singletary sealed the game by sliding there. Smart play, team player right there. And the final score was 21 to 15. Um, I'll talk about what I liked about that game. Malik Neighbors, he is a an elite playmaker. He's been balling as of late. And I would say it's him and Jaden Daniels right now in the conversation for Rookie of the Year, how much of an impact he's had on this Giants offense. And it's helping us move the ball down the field. And he's a guy you can rely on each play. And he's just been sensational to this offense and looks like a great piece for the future there. Um, also wanted to bring up Devin Singletary. He had a solid game as well. And, yeah, just relying on him and Malik Neighbors, the offense has looked good. Daniel Jones, he's been looking solid the past two weeks. I know they didn't play the greatest of teams in the Commanders and the Browns, but he's been doing what he had to do. He's been doing his job. He's been making the right throws, making the right reads, and being a game manager and, you know, not turning the ball over. That's all you can ask for in Daniel Jones. So got to give him his flowers when they're due. And the defense finally showed up. They finally played uh, Dexter Lawrence. Had a great game. Brian Burns got his first sack, strip sack, caused a turnover, and got us some points there And in the end. And the defense, yeah, we had eight sacks. I know we played that Browns offensive line. That was kind of banged up. But that is an opportunity to shine, and that's when they did it. They just had a great game, and everyone had a sack. Even our undrafted rookie, Elijah Chapman, who's been pretty good as of late, and got to respect him. And all in all, I'm like what the Giants are doing. They're moving. They're trending in the right direction after a slow start to the season. And it's going to be a tough one this coming Thursday with Dallas. But if they win this game on Thursday, then we could say the Giants might be, you know, actually possibly contending in the NFC East for a while. Or possibly. Depends. It depends how that game goes, how close it is. But, you know, they're trending in the right direction. And the season's not over yet for the New York Giants. So I will say that, and I'll turn the floor over to you. Yeah, I'll keep it short and sweet. You you talked about all the big ones. Uh, yeah, I guess the first thing that jumps to mind is Malik Neighbors. Absolutely right. He looks special. He's He's been a dog. He's been a beast. And those two touchdowns, you can attest to it. I saw them on Red Zone, but – they weren't great throws. Like the they were. the one that wasn't uh, the one that wasn't a touchdown where he had to forget the corner's name, but he had to jump over him and like grab yes. it. Yes, that was special. That we saw we saw that happen too during uh, training camp. A similar play. Yeah, Dale Jones he struggled throwing the ball to him, and Malik Neighbor still made like these ridiculous acrobatic catches to make it. I'm like, damn, they got a good one. You got to tip your cap there. Great. It was a great draft pick. And yeah, he's he's gotta be John Mira's new favorite player since Saquon left. He's gotta be. He's, <laughs> yeah. he's, the, fa- he's the face now. So he's definitely the face of the franchise. Happy for him. And yeah, your uh your D line in particular did what they had to do. Yeah, banged up O line. There's no excuses in the NFL. You gotta go out there. Doesn't matter who's out there, you gotta go and perform. And they took advantage of that poor O line, that banged up O line, and they they went to work on him. And they did their job. And I thought your O-line played pretty well. Like, I, I didn't figure Miles Garrett made too much of an impact in the game there. I guess my only complaint is that it was a little bit scary at the end. They did start to come back a little bit. So 
your offense can't get stagnant like that. So your defense was doing a relatively good job all game. They they bend a little bit. They gave up another touchdown. Your offense got to keep putting pressure. You can't slow down. You can't get stagnant. You got to keep put keep putting it to them there. So that's all my only complaint from your guys' game that week from what I saw. But yeah, enjoy this win. Enjoy it. Wins are hard. Win, winning in the league's hard, as we know. So enjoy it. And yeah, but it's a short lived one because you had a quick turnaround and it's a big divisional game for you guys. So you, you can't enjoy it too much. I'm sure they're already back and working and practicing today. So yeah, and all eyes are on Thursday and I can't wait for that. And we'll get into that game on the prediction video. So it'll be a fun one. Yeah. Um, and Miles Garrett, yeah, he did not have a sack. Andrew Thomas, you know, held down the fort. He had zero sacks. I think he had like yeah, one pressure. Good, Miles Garrett. So yeah, Andrew Thomas did a hell of a job. I know Miles Garrett's a little banged up too, so that might be another reason why he's got that like foot injury or something. Uh, but yeah, Andrew Thomas, the offensive line did held up, and yeah, that's a good sign. Hopefully, they can you know bring that and for uh, the Cowboys on Thursday. And perform well there. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about your Eagles. Let's talk about your Eagles, man. They got the job done. You know, it was kind of a you know crappy game until that fourth quarter. Then things started to turn around there. Final score was 15 to 12. Saquon Barkley looked pretty damn good. You know, big bounce back week after dropping the pass against the Falcons. Um, he had that big run, that big touchdown run. I think it was like 65 yards, right? And yeah. um, Dallas Goddard, he had a big you know, catch there at the end of the game, set up that touchdown. And, yeah, the Eagles got the job done. And I'll turn the floor over to you, see, you know, what were your thoughts about that big uh, win at the Saints? This game went exactly how I thought it would, Steve. I called it last week, exactly how I thought it was going to go. <laughs> no, it did not. I was so shocked that it was, like, 3 nothing for the longest time. I'm like, what the heck is this? Don't we not learn that – we had no pass rush, and the Saints put up forty on like every team. No, that didn't that didn't happen at all. Um, yeah, they brought some edge pressures with uh, like Zach Bond and those guys. They brought some pressures. They went in like six man, five man fronts. They loaded it up, and the, the book's out there now. He get, Vic Fangio got to give a lot of credit for him. A great game plan. He knew that if he get got their car pressure, if he pressured him, he he turns into a an average quarterback at best, not not a very good one. And when he had pressure, he he made some errant throws. He made some bad throws. Like the last one, I think he had pressure, and he threw an errant ball, and Reed Blankenship picked it off for the win there. So he made – so great game plan there. Um, I thought – I called out the Georgia boys last week. I'm like, you guys need to step up. You were non-existent in the first two games. Jalen Carter dominated. He was in the backfield, like almost every play. Made life hard for Derek Carr, and – Jordan Davis did his thing, too. He was good, too. I can't complain there. And, yeah, uh, the defense was great. Not, no complaints there. Excellent job. I was very, very surprised by that, but in a good way. It was it was awesome. But the other side, the offense let you down. But in particular, the coaching did. The coaching was really bad. There was uh, some – there was points in that game where it was, like, fourth, fourth down and, like, four to go. There was, like, fourth down and – they wanted to go for it. They could have kicked the field goal a couple different times to tie it at three. But uh, Nick Sirianni, and he's been saying today that those were my calls, those were my decisions, and they're a bad one. The The last one with, like, 10 seconds left in the second half was, like, a fourth down and, like, maybe, like, at most three to go when they were lined up for a tush push. And, yeah, he next decided to go, and they did, like, a little – they faked the tush push and handed off to Saquon, and he couldn't get through, get around it. And I was taken back. I'm like, you got to take the points there. It's 10 seconds left. What are we doing? So coaching almost lost you that game, particularly from Sirianni in particular. And uh, Jalen Hurts, he's got to work on the turnover. Uh, I'm not going to grill him too much there. I think I did that last week with the decision making. He's got to take care of the football better. He can't turn it over there. But one thing I can't take away from him is he finds a way to win games. He doesn't do it in the best way. He turns the ball over. But losing Devontae Smith, which I thought was a pretty dirty hit, uh, he was getting pushed back. He got tackled. He got pushed back. And then the defensive lineman hit him. I thought that was a pretty dirty play. 
And yeah, and Trevor Penning, the offensive tackle, while I'm on this topic, he blocked Slay out of bounds, Darius Slay out of bounds, which he should have just let go and he hurt the guy, but I think he's all good now. Which it, it's just a crazy it, it's crazy. The Saints are a pretty dirty team. I was pretty I was not happy about that. No foul calls there by the refs, but yeah, it, it was a fun game. It was not the way I expected it to go. But, yeah, Dallas Goddard show up, 10 catches, 170, did his thing. On that play, it was a simple, like, mesh concept. He he dragged across the field. He caught it. He took all the way. And what I saw from, like, the, the media, like, NFL experts, so, like, Rex Ryan even said, like, why were they playing man coverage there? They were in man coverage. It was a third and 16. They should have been in a zone. So that doesn't happen where the linebackers and the corners run into each other, which is exactly what happened on that play. If you go and watch that back and then Goddard had a free run at a touchdown, but he got chased down and Saquon punched it home and the two point conversion. And yeah. And then we ended up winning. So it was a great game. I didn't expect that, but I'm, I'm happy with the result though. So good job by the team, but the offense and the coaching has got to be better for sure. That won't fly in the league. But yeah. yeah. Turn it back to you. Yeah, I'm surprised, you know, with all those, um, you know, late hits that none of them got called or anything. There will be some fines uh, by the NFL, I believe, for sure. Maybe some suspensions. I don't know. Do you know who was the guy that, you know, busted up Devontae after that play? Uh, Peyton Turner. Okay, yeah. He apparently you... hit him and then spit on him, apparently. Yeah, I heard that, too. He spat on him. I'm like, what the hell? And he got a concussion, and I don't think we'll have him this week because I don't because we have a bye week five the following week, and I think they're just going to rest him and make sure. Yeah, he's good I would definitely rest, rest him. Yeah. Don't want to, you know, rush him back. Concussions are serious, and yeah, you want to have him fully healthy. And one thing too, we lost um, Mikai Beckin, our starting right guard, and, and Lane, Johnson. Lane Johnson. And yeah. it's like at times I didn't even notice that. So credit to Stoutland and credit for those guys. Stoutland Brett Johnson, University, right? Tyra Steen, they were ready. That's not that's. A, a good defense there that you play with. Like Tom Brady really struggled against Dallas, Dennis Allen's defense. He'll tell you himself that playing yeah. New Orleans, playing Dennis Allen, it was tough. And when he was in Tampa Bay, he had a losing record. I think he only made one one game, maybe. They, they had a good game plan for him. So I'm very impressed and very happy with the win. Yeah. And now they got the Bucks. Is it at Philly or is it at it's, Tampa? It's in Tampa Bay and then okay. the bye. Yeah, so that should be a fun game. You know, Bucks are looking to, you know, right the ship after last week's debacle uh, with the Broncos. Um, but, you know, let's turn over to the Ravens, right? Let's go to the other NFC East game. The Ravens, hold on. They do beat the Cowboys in a big thriller game there. And Derrick Henry was feasting. He had a big day on the ground and yeah at first it looks like the Ravens were going to roll them and then you know we saw a late comeback there by Dallas um mm -hmm. Justin what to see like how concerned are you with Dallas right now well I was never really bullish so to speak on Dallas when we did our in-season predictions I know you had them higher than I did I had them third place in the division and and it was because of the lack of offseason they had they have no running attack which you saw there, and you saw the guy that was that wanted to be a Cowboy. It's pretty public knowledge that Derrick Henry did want to go to the Cowboys. And Jerry Jones has been saying, look, we, we couldn't afford him. But everyone's pushing back like, yeah, you could have if you paid CD, if you paid Dak beforehand, then you would have had some money to give Derrick Henry. But I digress there. But, yeah, a couple things. Uh, yeah, Dallas, I mean, I'm concerned about it. I am concerned about, like, the attitude of the locker room. Like, CD Lamb – uh, I think he got, like, benched, too. Like, everyone was saying, like, all the Cowboys fans were like, he got benched for his attitude. He was yelling at Zach Martin. He was yelling at Dak Prescott on the sideline. And I don't think he was out there towards, like, the end of the game. I think Mike might have sat him. Um, so I ne we need better leadership from him. He's getting paid. He's the highest one of the highest paid receivers in the league, only behind Justin Jefferson. So he's got to be more mature. He's got to be a leader. He's got to step up there. And Dak's got to be better, too. You can't get down in those holes like that. And the Dallas run defense is really bad. They, they didn't address that. Like, what we saw in that Packer game was, like, a lack of the run and the lack of stopping a run, and that's what happened. They knew this. They had – Derrick Henry went off, and Lamar Jackson sealed the game at the end with that 
uh, art like that designed run where he kept it on a read option and he ended up sealing the game there. So yeah, Dallas, I am concerned about, and and I was concerned about them before the season. To be honest with you, I didn't I didn't believe in them. I had them for a third in the division. And just to get on the Ravens side real quick, uh, there is a really common trend of the Ravens blowing games there, and they almost did it again. So for them, they gotta. Like I told the Giants, you got to keep the foot on their neck. You got to keep pushing. Yes, you want to chew the time off. You do want to run, but you got to be aggressive. You got to try to put more points down while killing clock. So that was tough there. You got to be better. You got to execute better there. That does go on John Harbaugh a bit. I think he's a good coach, but when you have all these evidence of games you choked, it does come down to you. It comes down on Lamar Jackson. Tom Monk in the OC and all the coaches there. So it's on everyone and all the players. They just got to be better. They, you got to close out games there. So I'm a little bit concerned about them there. They got a tough one against Buffalo Sunday night, and we'll see what happens there. But they got to perform much better too. So both teams are kind of struggling, and I think they need to both perform better if they want to make a playoff run. So that's where I'm at. Yeah, that should be a good game. I did not know the Ravens are – Playing the Bills Sunday night. That should they be are, fun. Yeah, in Baltimore. That that should be fun. Um, yeah, Cowboys is kind of concerning, but I just want to say that the Ravens we view them as contenders, right? We view them as one of the top dogs in AFC. So yes, I I understand you know the ass whooping in the beginning, but then you know seeing the Cowboys still fighting there and clawing there at the end that was that was a positive sign, and showed that they weren't willing to quit after getting you know beat pretty bad there um so that that's a good sign i'm still a little concerned though for sure because you know that run defense it does look bad they're letting everyone run all over them and that is not a good sign so that's a good sign for the giants this thursday hopefully devin singletary can have a big game um but yeah the Mm -hmm. cowboys it's kind of concerning but we do view the ravens as one of the contenders and how they were able to you know kind of you know come back and claw back against the ravens that's a good sign and yeah, it all depends on Thursday. Like, will the Cowboys beat the Giants? That you know that if they don't beat the Giants on Thursday, then I would be really concerned because you know everyone views the Giants as a last place team in NFCs, right? So if they don't mm-hmm. get the job done and beat the Giants on Thursday, then I start being concerned uh, because this is a divisional game, and you know you're fighting for your season. Season's on the line. You're already one and two. You lose on Thursday. You're already one and three, and that's not a good start to the first four games of your season there. So I would be concerned there. And, yeah, all that, you know, commotion on the sideline with C.D. Land, that is concerning. You don't want that to happen. You want to stay together as a team and fight through it. So, you know, those are some signs. That could be some red flags that, you know, the season might not turn out to be that good for the Cowboys, and they could miss the playoffs. Who knows? I say it's a little too early yet to tell because, you know, the Ravens are still one of the better teams in the league even though they're one and two as well. Um, but, yeah, we'll see what happens. The Cowboys can right the ship, you know, beat the Giants comfortably. I would say they're fine at the moment because I know, you know, it's a big game in the NFC East and all that. So if they could win this game and win convincingly like they've done in years past, I would say, you know, they're right back on track. But, yeah, they have to win against these teams like the Ravens and all these other playoff teams that they're going to be facing. So hopefully they could do that. We'll see. Um, but, yeah, the Ravens, I think, you know, this is a step in the right direction. The offense was clicking. Derrick Henry was a workhorse, and it's a good sign to see. And I still think the Ravens are going to win a division at the end of the day. I know it's early yet. I know that the Steelers are 3-0, and and they've been winning their games. But I still think the Ravens are the best team, and the season's not over yet. And we've seen Lamar, you know, come back from, you know, being down early in the season and win these games, these close games against these teams and win a division. So I feel like the Ravens season is not over yet. And this is just, you know, you know, the start to something good for the end of the season here. So, you know, I think the Ravens will be fine. And I think the Cowboys, I'm starting to be a little concerned. My my panic meter is a little bit up for them. And if they write the ship on Thursday, I think, you know, that's a step in the right direction, but we will see. But let's move on. Let's move on. Let's talk about the uh, Panthers. You called it. Justin called it. Panthers (laughs) upset them Raiders. 
And Andy Dalton, man, he looked good. And it's kind of concerning for Bryce Young. You can see how much of a drop-off there is with Bryce Young and Andy Dalton. So that's kind of concerning. But Andy Dalton, he lit it up, 300 yards, three touchdowns, and they were firing all cylinders. Chubba Hubbard had a big game. Deontay Johnson, Adam Thielen went healthy, you know, had that touchdown there. And, you know, they got the job done. And that's a good win for the Panthers. They thought the season was over. And they finally got a win. And now, you know, everyone's happy in Carolina there. Um, yeah, what's your instant reaction to that game? I thought it would be more of like a close or a grinded out kind of game. But it, it was just a complete blowout. It, it was unbelievable. Um, Deontay Johnson, I kind of even forgot that the Steelers and the Panthers made a trade. I forgot he was there. And he looked really good with. Andy Dalton there. Um, Thielen looked good. The offense looked like it revived a little bit. And uh, Dave Canales, I thought he called a good game. He showed why he was hired. He, it was a good game from him, too. Um, yeah, I guess we didn't really touch much. We didn't touch at all last week about the Bryce Young benching. And after this, I'm convinced it was more of his lack of play. Because if he – Andy Dalton, I give him credit. He's a good quarterback. But if – uh, but he if he he did what he had to, and Bryce John he he could have done the same thing if he just were to play better. He's not playing to the Andy Dalton level yet, so this could be. I I don't know if they're going to bring him back. It's a really weird and tough situation. They bring Bryce John back into the lineup at this point, unless they start losing some games again and give Bryce John another shot because they can go quarterback again early in the draft, but. Yeah, that's a tough situation. I will be covering that all all NFL season. So I'm not going to delve too much into that, but I want to give Panthers their flowers here. And what a win. That was a great win. And yeah, Antonio Pierce, he called out uh he called out his team too. He, he called them out. I, I forget exactly what he said, but he basically basically said something that they made uh, it was something like they made business a business decision like they didn't want to yeah. show up they didn't want to tackle they didn't want to play they just thought it would be a free win and i kind of when i was going into picking that game I'm like you beat the ravens they're probably like oh we could easily handle the panthers and they took them lightly and the panthers were motivated they got andy dalton so they probably want to play well for him a new head coach if they want to win his first game as a head coach so they had mm -hmm. a lot of motivating factors going into it. i'm like and that's why i picked them but yeah Antonio Pierce, when he came in, he was all about discipline. They didn't look that way at all. Toughness. Anything the Antonio Pierce wave wasn't on display from that team. And yeah, Gardner Minshew didn't look too well. Not that I thought that offense was world beaters, but gotta wonder when Aiden O'Connell is gonna take over. It might be I know Gardner Minshew started this upcoming game. I'm not sure who they play, but yeah, so they still have a tough quarterback situation to deal with, and they're still they're still in their rebuild as well. It was just a reminder that they're a rebuilding team as well. But we thought they're a little bit further ahead than the Panthers, but maybe not. Maybe it's not as far as a gap now after that game. So they got a lot of rebuilding to do down in uh, Las Vegas. Yeah, it's concerning. You know, they still don't have their franchise guy. They'll probably you know no, look at don't. that this off season. And, you know, maybe it's through the draft. Maybe they sign a big free agent. Um, but, yeah, it's concerning that they still don't have a franchise guy. And, you know, you got one of the best receivers in the game in Devontae Adams, and you don't have a QB one. So that is concerning. Yes. Um, but maybe, you know, Andy Dalton goes to the Raiders next year. Who knows? I don't know how long his contract is, but that's a guy that could be a bridge guy for them more than a Gardner Minshew. But, obviously, they want yeah. someone better than Andy Dalton. Uh, but, yeah, I'll touch on the Bryce Young situation just a little bit. Um, yeah, it's concerning, you know, just inserting Andy Dalton in the lineup, and he balls out like that. And, you know, that has to hurt Bryce Young's confidence a lot. You know, a guy sure. that, you know, was a number one overall pick and just hasn't been able to perform yet in his very young career. You know, you could tell he's still a little ways away from being, you know, that type of player. And maybe he just needs to sit like Patrick Mahomes did with uh, Alex Smith just a little bit in this Dave Canales offense just to learn from a guy like Andy Dalton, a guy that's experienced, a guy that's a veteran, you know, and 
maybe, you know, he'll learn a thing or two. And he does earn that starting job back if the Panthers lose some games, you know, I guess the rest of the season. Depends, you know, how, you know, how good Andy Dalton is. Like, how good will he be for this Panthers team? Will they win a lot of games with him under center? I don't know. It was just one game, and it was the Raiders. It's not like he beat a really good team. Um, so, you know, Bryce Young could definitely earn a spot back, and that's something we got to keep our eye on. And, you know, I'm rooting for the guy. It, it sucks to be in that situation, being that number one overall pick, just not given the right opportunity and just dealing with that dysfunction in that organization. But, you know, I'm rooting for the guy. I think he will get his job back. And, yeah, the Panthers are already getting trade offers for him. And they're like, no, we're going to keep him. We still believe in him. That's a good sign. And I think we will see him back as the Panthers quarterback sometime soon. Yeah. So. You can't give up on him after 18, 19 games like that. And yeah. uh, like you mentioned, that I'm a big proponent of letting your rookies sit behind at least for a year under a veteran like Andy Dolan just to learn how they go about their business and how they handle the field and just be able to talk to them and have them there to pick your brain. And then eventually during that season or the next year, you take over. So it's too early to write the book, write the ship off of Bryce Young. But, yeah, man, uh, I have a question for you. I just thought of it. If you're on the Raiders side of things, if you're Tom Tomesco, if you're the GM, would you trade Devontae Adams if he got at least like a second or first round pick for next year to like a if, if like a contender was like a receiver away, if he wanted to reunite with like an Aaron Rodgers, let's say with the Jets? Would I trade him for a first or second round pick? Would you would you trade him for like future assets? Because you're you're a rebuilding team at the end of the day. It could, you could get a first, you could get a second. I don't know exactly what his trade value is. I feel like I would need players as well in return, not just draft picks. Because, like, Devontae Adams is a really good player, and I feel like a first-round pick will not – that chance of that first-round pick being a player like Devontae Adams, the chances are, like, I would say, I don't know, maybe, like, 20%. Like, you're not going to get a guy like Devontae Adams – in your locker room with the first round pick. Like it could be a Kadarius Tony they draft in the first round. It could be a bust. So I wouldn't just trade it for a first round pick or a second round pick. I would try and get a player that's proven as well out of it. Maybe, you know, more than one player. And that's what I would do. I wouldn't just trade them straight up for a first round pick because right. that's not going to translate into the production that Devontae Adams can have on your team. So I would not do that. I, yeah, I would do it, like you said, if the compensation made sense. Like, you would need a high round draft pick, and you need a lot more compensation with that. And like you said, maybe a player or two that are serviceable NFL players at the least. Yeah. Yeah, we could change topics now. Yeah. So, you want to talk about the commanders? Let's talk about the commanders. Why not? Let's do it. Let's do it. So, um, they, they pulled off the upset. They beat the Bengals. They got the job done. Jaden Daniels looks special, and he looks like the best rookie quarterback right now out of the draft class. Had three touchdowns, right? Completed 90% of his passes, and he looked special last night. And, you know, the Commanders, they got they got the franchise guy. They finally have their franchise quarterback. So that's something to be happy about if you're a Commanders fan. And, yeah, the Bengals, on the other hand, they're, they're not looking so hot. And the question is, are they contenders this year? That is that is a real question. They're starting out 0-3. They always start out slow. But is this the year that they're not going to start winning games and still be stinky? I don't know. Uh, Joe Burrow, though, he looked good. Had a solid game yesterday. I think he had three touchdowns. Jamar Chase looked good. Um, but, yeah, that commander's secondary isn't anything to talk about. So you should be having a productive day against a team like the Commanders. But, yeah, it's concerning, you know, a team that's been to Super Bowl quite, what, a few years ago now? You, Yeah, so mm -hmm. I just it's just really concerning. Joe Burrow is supposed to be your guy, supposed to be a top-five quarterback in this league, and with him you're supposed to be winning these games, especially on Monday Night Football, Commanders, rookie quarterback, and you put up a stinker and you couldn't get the job done. Uh, I would be concerned if I was a Bengals fan, and if I was on the Bengals as well, Joe Burrow and company, I would be concerned. And 
But I've got to, got to tip my cap off to the Commanders getting the job done. And now they're tied for first place with the Philadelphia Eagles for the division. So yes. got to give them credit where credit's due. And, yeah, I want to turn over to you with your instant reaction to the game. Yeah, uh, you know, since I was uh, when I when we were doing like the draft coverage and all this, I was I was telling it, it's not Caleb Williams to me. It's uh, Jaden Daniels is the best quarterback coming out this year, and he's it's still early to too early to tell. I'll, I'll admit that, but he's looking really good. Uh, every game he's improving, so I like what um, Cliff Kingsbury and quarterback coach, who was the former Eagles OC Brian Johnson, I like what they're doing. They're progressing him along nicely. He looks better and better and better every week. And yeah, they, they had a really nice showing against a Bengals defense that always that is notoriously known for giving Patrick Mahomes uh, some fits. And we all know how great Patrick Mahomes is. So that's no such of a defense, and they couldn't figure out how to. Slow them down at all. They they couldn't fit Lou Amarumo, he couldn't figure it out. But yeah, uh, but the commander's defense wasn't great either. That game had zero punts. <laughs> it had zero punts in it, so bad defensive play. And if you love defensive football, not the game for you. Uh, it was just an offensive onslaught by both teams there. And yeah, it was I was really impressed by the commander's win. I didn't see it. I would think we both picked the Bengals there, but I, I I was pretty high on the Commanders as as I picked them second. I did pick them over the Cowboys. I did. Uh, I I was pretty high on them. And one thing I want to add about the Commanders is Dan Quinn. Say what you want about him. Uh, Troy Aikman even mentioned on the broadcast like he's such a likable guy. He's a good coach. Uh, the team plays hard for him, and you can tell they do play hard for him. They do. They did. They did try. It. They did play their hearts out yesterday. And but that defense to play. Like what he had with Dallas and like the Seattle days when he was coordinated there, uh, they need to invest in the draft and they need to get the kind of players to run his system right. Because I know I know their defense is not good and they're not at the Dan Quinn standards, so they got to get better there. They got to improve on the defensive side. But I like what they're doing offensively. Brian Robinson looks like a great running back. And, you know Terry McLaurin is a very underrated receiver. He finally got going. He looks. Great last night, and he had the game ceiling touchdown, which it's a good moment for him. I was pretty happy for him. I know he's had a quarterback carousel there in Washington, so to finally like have a guy there now that you, that you know is a cornerstone, not looking like the franchise guy, got to be a good feeling for Terry McLaurin. So I'm happy for him too. But yeah, just real quickly on the Bengals side, it is pretty concerning. It is. I I, I saw today like if you start zero and three, I you don't make the playoffs. I think that's true in history. I think nobody really made the playoffs. You could like write that ship off. I'm not going to do that, but because they do have some uh, good, good players, Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase finally looked like himself. He went off. He had two touchdowns, looked really good. The offense, the offense played fine. Like I said, there was no punts or everything. There was a couple times in the red area where in the red zone, they had to kick a field goal. They couldn't punch it in. So, Maybe improve the red zone offense a little bit, I would say. Like, I'm going back to week one, you only got 10 points against the Patriots. So, the red zone offense, I think, is the only area where they really need to improve. And just the offensive line play needs to protect Joe Burrow better, in my opinion. That's my concerns offensively. It just, and defensively, they've been, they've been playing fine. They had a letdown game here. So, I, I feel like they'll get, they'll start clicking a little bit. Are they a playoff team? It's not looking like it's not looking like it at this moment. Uh, I don't see him finishing ahead of the Steelers now. I don't see him really being in Baltimore. Uh, I do think they're better than Cleveland on the other hand, but yeah, we'll we'll sh we'll see. We'll see. The AFC is tough. I don't think they'll they'll make it at the end of the day with this start. Yeah, it's gonna be really hard. You have to like win a lot of your games now in a row to actually make the playoffs. They have to go on a winning yeah. streak. That's the only way they could do it. Um, who knows? I feel like they have the star power to do it, mm -hmm. but it's going to be really hard to do so. Um, but, yeah, I feel yeah. like they still finish, like, third place. And you know what should be interesting mm -hmm. to watch? That hard knocks in season with the AFC North. That should be fun. Oh, true, true. I, I believe that, that starts midway through the season there. So that will be good coverage. You know, see, like, how – you know, they're dealing with the losing and all that. So, yeah, 
That should be fun to watch. I think that starts like sometime around like week eight, you know, middle of the season there. So yeah. that should be fun to watch. Yeah. Uh, one yeah. La- yeah. One last thing on them. Uh, it's not how you start. It's how you finish. If you look, I'm not calling in the chiefs the last year, but the chiefs didn't start off the best last year. And then by the end of the season, they were rolling. They looked like the best team of football. No one can beat them. So my point is, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. They could finish strong. They could surprise us and make a run. I'm not going to write it off completely for them yet. It's going to, I don't see it yeah. yet. Uh, I don't see it at this point. They're going to have to prove a lot of people wrong because now they're 0 3 and everyone's kind of off the Bengals train a little bit. So you have to bring people back on. You have to make people believers again. So, and it's a pretty good, it's pretty good that you get Carolina. You need to go out there and you need to win that game. It's a must win. Every game's a must win from now on. You can't. I would say you have to go, what is it, 14 and 0 the rest of the way is how I would look at it. Mm-hmm. Try to, to make a push. Yeah, a little Andy Dalton revenge game. That should be fun to tune into. So I'm excited. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I think we can end off this podcast here. If you guys want to see more content and us recapping every week and more podcasts, drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. We would really appreciate it. Go follow our socials as well. We got a link tree down below. It's got all our socials on there. And any final words, Justin, before we end off today's podcast? Uh, Thank you for tuning in. And, yeah, if anything else stood out from you from week three, comment it down below. There's a lot of other great topics to get into, too, that we couldn't get to on this episode. So comment that down below as well. All right, yeah. And we'll catch you guys later. Benchwire. Out.